Have you ever dreamed of mastering calisthenics skills such as the handstand, the front lever, the planche, handstand push-up, one-arm chin-up, muscle-up, human flag, V-seat, and so on, but you feel lost and you don't know where to start? Stick around because I've got you. On this video, we're gonna be going over when to start training for skills, how to combine skill training with basic fundamental exercises, and finally, some training examples so you can apply all this knowledge right away. I highly recommend that you check our previous video on how to train for calisthenics skills, where we go over how many skills should you train at a time, which skills to learn first, how often to train for those skills, and much more valuable information that is gonna allow you to understand this video better. But without losing any more time, let's get to the video. Alright, so when and how should you actually start training for your skills? Before we can even begin to talk about skill training, how to combine it with the strength training, adding mobility, adding handstand, etc., we need to make a very important point, and that is that you need to master the basics before you start training for skills. Even if you have fitness preparation, each of the fundamental movement patterns like the push-up, the dip, the pike push-up, the pull-up, and the row require a certain amount of time to be performed correctly and reap their benefits. And spending time there will never be a waste of time. In this video, I will cover how to combine basic with various skills, but please do yourself a favor and use your first year of your calisthenics journey to master these movements first. In addition to the compound movements that I just mentioned, this is also a time to work on fundamental stability positions such as top dip support, active hand, hollow body hole, and elbow plank. This is also a time to condition your joints with basic scapula exercises such as scapula push-ups, active to passive hang, and others. Each of the movements that I mentioned are a skills in and of themselves, especially for true beginners, and they take time to learn. Therefore, you will not be making optimal progress if you, one, try to do all that while also training for a skill, no matter how easy the skill is. And number two, even worse, you try to just jump into skill training and trying to build a peak under a poor foundation. Do not skip this phase of your calisthenics journey and I guarantee that you're gonna be saving so much time and energy, especially if you wanna go for hard skills like planche, Victorian, and others. But even if you don't wanna pursue those hard skills, a proper joint preparation phase and a basic strength phase, it is required before you start to add intensity to your calisthenics training or to any training for that matter. Let me know down below if you would like me to cover extensively how to arrange your training to create a strong base for calisthenics, but let's continue with the main purpose of this video, which is training for skills. Okay, so you've now built a strong base and you want to start training for skills. The number one mistake that people do is that, okay, basics have been mastered, so I'm going to stop doing them altogether and start my skill training. So we go from a workout that looks like this to one that looks like this. Big mistake, why? In order to keep your foundation of strength and muscle mass, you have to keep doing some form of basics. Then our movements, taken through a full range of motion, will always be more effective for building and maintaining muscle than isometric positions. Number two is that when you start training for a particular skill, your endurance in that particular skill and the amount of work that you're gonna be able to do is going to be very low. Meaning, if you suddenly go from zero planche training to doing five different planche progressions, you won't be able to keep up the good technique on all the movements, making your training unproductive. And lastly, doing only straight arm exercises can potentially increase your chances of injuries. Keeping some pull-ups around when doing front lever work, for example, and some dips when doing planche work, it's a smart idea. But Gabo, I see all these advanced athletes only doing planches and lever, what's going on with that? And I'll get to that in a second. But before, let me share what I recommend for the majority of us mere mortals. And that is that, let's say that on the first year of your calisthenics journey, you've been doing only basics, as it should, then you decide to train for the planche and for the front lever. You're going to pick only one single progression for each, let's say planche lean for planche, and inverted hand for front lever, and you're gonna add it to your training. So we go from 100% basics 
to around 80% basics and 20% skills. So now we go from a workout that looks like this to one that looks like this. Then as you get more advanced, you can add more progressions in exchange for basic exercises. So now we went from something like 80-20 basics to skill ratio to something like 60-40. In this way, we're building a smooth transition from fundamental exercises to skill training. Keep in mind that we're only using one single workout as an example currently, but stick around because we're gonna dive deeper on different combinations at the end of this video. Okay, so what about the best athletes in the world that only do statics? The thing is that they also do basics, but with a much higher intensity and with a higher degree of specificity. Instead of doing push-ups, they are doing planche push-ups. Instead of doing rows, they are doing front lever pull-ups. Instead of doing pike push-ups, they are doing 90 degree handstand push-ups. They are still doing bent arm movements and that is why they can keep their muscle mass, their strength and not get injured. I have talked with countless of world champions and they either combine their skill static training with planche push-ups, front lever pull-ups, etc. to maximize the specificity of training or they combine it with fundamental movements at a higher intensity like weighted pull-ups and weighted dips. In short, regardless of of your level, bend our movements are going to be key for the longevity and progress of your training when pursuing static skills. Now, when it comes to bent arm dynamic skills like muscle ups, handstand push ups, and one arm chin up, it's a different story since you will be very likely doing a lot of bent arm work to achieve those skills. Now, how much skill work and how much basics are you going to do is going to depend on many, many factors, but here are the two most important ones. Number one, the more advanced the athlete is and the stronger the base, the more skilled work he or she will be able to do. And number two, based on the individual weaknesses of the athlete, some will need to spend more time on basics and complementary exercises to keep solidifying their foundation. I hope you can now see why mastering the basics is so important and why we say it so much is because if you don't, you're gonna have to be juggling too many balls at the same time instead of actually putting all that energy into mastering the skill that you want to achieve. Now let's go to some training examples to make sense of all this information that we just shared. This is of course a huge topic in and of itself. I will have to make a video on each individual skill covering all the possible combinations that we have. If you want that, please let me know your favorite skill down below. But for now, use these training examples as what they are, examples. They are not pre-planned programs that you are going to follow exactly as they are and you're gonna be making progress. If you're a member of our app, you know that every single workout and every single program is customizable to your level, needs, and goals. We teach you how to do that because it is that important. Apply the same to these training examples. Again, they are examples, not programs for you to follow. With that being said, we're going to be covering three methods of how we can mix skill training with basics using various skills as an example. The first method is going to be hybrid workouts. This is what I recommend for most beginners as we can do an ease transition from fundamental movement patterns into a skill training. You are simply going to choose one to three progressions of the skill that you want to achieve and one to three basic exercises and combine them in the same routine. Let's say that you have been training your basic movement patterns and its variation three times per week. And now you choose to work on your L-sit, pistol squat and handstand. You will now swap some bent arm movements for skill work like handstand holds, pistol squat progressions and L-sit progressions in this way, you keep improving on your basic strength while you work towards those skills. Also, feel free to add more days of training here, especially for handstand, given that this skill greatly benefits from a higher frequency. Now, let's see a similar example, training for the planche and front lever. Let's say that we're coming from the same three times per week full body routine, but we are more advanced. So let's use harder fundamental exercises. Let's keep in mind that the harder the skill, the stronger the base we need. If you want a video covering my personal standards for each skill, please leave it all in the comment section down below and we'll make it happen. Continuing, if we now want to start training for the planche and front lever, I recommend you start with only one progression of each to start. Remove a basic push movement and add a planche progression and remove a basic pull movement and add a front lever progression at the start of your training when you're fresh. And here you can see that we ended up with a good balance between vertical and horizontal pushing and pulling 
while working on solidifying the planche lean and the advanced stock front lever by doing them three times per week. Here we have six skill-based exercises and 12 fundamental compound exercises, making it around 70% basics and 30% skills, which is perfect to start introducing skills into your programming. Now, little side note, you might be wondering why planche lean three times per week instead of varying the planche progression. And that's my personal preference. I believe that a true beginner in planche cannot learn the planche lean properly, only doing it once per week. So I highly recommend a higher frequency approach on a particular progression when you're starting out. Now you could totally do something like day one planche lean, day two tuck planche on floor, and day three tuck planche on parallettes, and something similar with front lever, and it will work just fine. Adding just one single progression per skill is my personal preference because I've seen over the years that if we focus all our attention into one single progression, it's a smart idea given how complex a planche lean, a proper planche lean, and an inverted hang can be. Now, if you have a stronger base, you are more advanced in your skill training journey, or you want to progress from the previous example, you will be doing something more like 70% skill and 30% basics as shown in the screen. For very advanced athletes, you can go 100% all in into skill training, but that will not work for 99% of the people watching this. But do not worry, we'll see an example at the end of this video. Finally, to add to the final example, you can work on lower body, handstands, or really any other skill that do not conflict with your main goals, the days in between your main sessions. Like, do not train for the one chin up, muscle up, front lever on those days, and you should be fine, but always pay attention to your recovery. So as you can see in the previous example, you are able now to work towards the planche and front lever while also working on maintaining your handstand, L-sit, and pistol squat. This will work very similar if working towards, let's say, the muscle up and the handstand push-up, or the one on chin up and the handstand push up. All right, family, let's continue with the second method of how to combine a skill with basics, which we call weekly split. This is more suitable for intermediate athletes that really want to laser focus on a particular skill without stopping training their basics. Here, we will divide the week where part of it is a skill work while the other part is fundamental compound exercises. Using front lever and planches as our example, we will train these skills two days of the week and basics one day of the week. Here we're doing the same amount of exercises as our last example with hybrid workouts, 12 exercises for skills and six exercises for basics. So around 70, 30 split favoring skills, but we simply do them in separate days. I would not recommend this for beginners or individuals that need a higher amount of basic work because you're only training basics once a week. And if you try to swap it around, you're gonna be ending up with two days of basics and one day of a skill. And as we know from our previous video, the optimal frequency for skills is going to be two to three times per week. However, we can fix this by swapping some skill-based exercises for fundamental patterns and pretty much do a mix between hybrid workouts and weekly split. Here, we would end up with eight exercises for planche and front and 10 basic exercises for on 60-40, which can work incredibly well for those who want a more progressive transition. Once again, there are many ways to skin the cat and I really hope these examples are making sense to you. If they don't, please leave any questions in the comment section down below and we'll either answer to you or we'll make a more detailed video about it. But let's move to the last method, which is we do not split a workout, we do not split a week, but we split an entire training phase. Let me explain, periodization. With this method, we would do an entire training block of either four, eight, or even 12 weeks where we focus on hypertrophy and or strength with basic exercises. Then we follow by another training block, 100% dedicated to skills. In this way, we can put all our focus into building muscle in the areas needed for certain skills, and then all our attention into skill progressions. I only recommend this method to really advanced athletes that can handle a high amount of volume on a skill training for a complete training block. Usually the athletes that try this method have already tried the previous two methods before. Let's use planche and front as our example here as well. The athlete will do a training block of four to 12 weeks with a solely focus on building muscle and strength for those skills with basic exercises. It is important to choose exercises that will either grow the muscle in the relevant areas, 
front delt chest and triceps for planches, lats, rear delt, traps, and rhomboids for front lever, as well as exercises for a strength that will carry over to those skills. Here you can also work on scapula-specific exercises like scapula push-ups for planche and connective tissue strengthening exercises like the Seneti press, given that you have more volume to work with. After that, it is time to put all that muscle and strength created by specifying in the skills you want to achieve. Now is where I see we can fully focus 100% on skills, with any bent arm work coming from a skill progressions as well to maximize the specificity. Again, this is something that I only recommend to advanced athletes because beginners will not be able to handle that amount of skill work. They will not be able to do all the exercises with good technique and they're gonna be losing muscle mass and strength because they did not take the time to build that strong foundation. So do not rush, start with the workout split, then move on to the weekly split, and then you can think about periodization. Family, that's all we have for today. I really, would love to go way deeper into this. This is only scratching the surface, but to really make justice, we'll have to select a single skill and make a video on a particular skill and talk about all the possible training splits and combinations and methodologies that we can apply to that skill. So please, if you have any favorite skill that you would like us to go in detail, leave it in the comment section down below, whether that is the planche, the front lever, the human flag, the handstand, whatever will make it happen for you. If programming confuses you and you want a clear path in a program that mixes skills with basics in an easy to follow way, we have all our calisthenics program in our app so you can eliminate the guesswork and just execute. Also, you can find a free ebook with a summary of this video and all the routines templates previously shown in the description. Finally, if you join the app, in the next four days, we're also giving for free a calisthenics skills bundle that includes the PDFs of this video, a visit guide, a completed straight on press to handstand program, a 15 minute planche routine, a 15 minute front lever routine, a 15 minute muscle routine, a 15 minute handstand push up routine. And if you're still building your base and not training for skills, we're also giving you a calisthenics beginner program that you can follow before you jump into skill training. All PDF and eBooks come with a video explanation. And again, this promotion is only available for the next four days. You can join our app at 50% off your first month and get everything that I just mentioned, plus access to all our workouts and programs. All the information is going to be in the description. I would love to see you all there and it would be an honor for me to be your guide in your calisthenics and movement journey. If you enjoy this type of deep dive videos, please let us know in the comment section down below so we know that this is the type of content that you like. And if you like any other type of content, also let us know down below and we'll make it happen for you. Like the video, share the video, you know what to do. And with that being said, guys, I truly appreciate each of you for being here. We are almost at 1 million subscribers from the moment that I'm recording this. We probably crossed it already. I don't know. But thank you guys so much for to each of you for that like, for that comment, for that share, and even for simply that watch of the video. Truly, truly means the entire world to us. With that being said, guys, I wish you an amazing rest of your day, and we'll talk to you next time. Peace out.